Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review of Statistical Probabilities, which is the ninth episode of the sixth season of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. This episode is a part of a series of videos I'm doing where I review episodes of Star Trek as requested by my viewers. So if there's an episode from any of the five Star Trek series you would like me to review, just leave a comment below with the episode and I'll endeavor to review it. This episode was requested by Frank Steiner. Um, so, Statistical Probabilities is the episode where a group of genetically engineered people who are confined to an institution uh, because they are suffering from unintended side effects from the, of those enhancements are brought to the station so that Dr. Bashir, being an example of someone who was genetically enhanced, who integrated well into society, can tutor them and try to relate the, um, to them on a more personal basis. Um, in the group, you have Jack, uh, the most vocal in the group, who exhibits extreme behavior as he's highly volatile. Well, why don't you fix it, dear fellow, dear fellow? Well, why don't you fix it before I go mad? Um, Lauren, a woman who seems obsessed with seducing men. He's married. Too bad. Patrick, an older gentleman who's quiet and has an almost childlike demeanor. Hi. No, thanks. It's a party. No, I need to get to work. I didn't mean to. And Selena, a woman who never speaks and just sits quietly in the corner. Hello, Serena. What is he talking to her for? He read the reports. She won't answer you. Didn't you read the reports? Hmm? 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 Bashir starts to empathize with them and tries to come up with a way to make them productive members of society as they are as they are watching uh, a speech Damar gives about proposing peace between the Dominion and the Federation. Uh, the genetic, genetically engineered group manages to extrapolate uh, Damar's entire backstory based off of one speech. Uh, so Bashir gives them more uh, information about the Dominion War to which they come up with a handful of helpful predictions and suggestions on how to win the war. And everything seems to be going wonderfully until they come up with the proof to, to which they claim is irrefutable proof that the Federation will lose the war and they suggest surrender. Um, when Starfleet rejects their suggestion, um, the genetically engineered group tried to force the issue by supplying the Dominion with all of Starfleet's troop deployments in order to allow them to swiftly win the war, putting Bashir in a tough position as he has to choose between the, the proof he supports or allowing his friends to commit treason, causing the Federation to lose the war. So this is the first episode to focus fully on Dr. Bashir's genetic engineering since it was revealed in the previous season's episode, Dr. Bashir, I presume. And I think um, I should be upfront with the fact I'm not a huge fan of this revelation of Dr. Bashir being genetically engineered. I think it's completely inconsistent with everything established about the character in the first five seasons, and it was an obvious ploy to make Bashir more interesting from a sci-fi perspective. Cube root of 329. What is it? 6.903. Very good. And you didn't even use your fingers. He's a mutant just like the rest of us. I know they came up with this blanket excuse to explain the inconsistencies that Dr. Bashir was pretending to not be genetically in the enhanced in order to blend in and hide the fact that he was. Therefore, anything that appeared to be inconsistent with this was just him pretending not to be genetically engineered. But I'm really not buying it, and I think it's a cheap excuse. Uh, if you rewatch the first five seasons, it's blatantly obvious that the writers had had not thought of this idea and this is just something they threw in there to make the show more interesting in the fifth season. Examples can be found in the fourth season episode The Quickening where Bashir was desperately trying to overcome a 
deadly genetically engineered virus. It's hard to believe that someone who was gen genetically engineered uh, would make as many mistakes as Bashir did in that episode, and I don't buy that he was just pretending or holding back because he desperately wanted to cure the disease to save uh, an entire society. Another example is the third season episode, Explorers, where Dr. Bashir was jealous of another officer that beat him and has the top of his medical class because she aced a test that Bashir didn't do as well in, uh, which allowed her to get her first pick of assignments, uh, which was the one Bashir wanted. And you can't just tell me he simply let her win to, so he didn't look too suspicious because it's obvious from the way he was behaving in this episode that it was something he truly regretted and something that really bothered him. Anyway, I suppose at this stage in the series, they had already committed to this inconsistent storyline of Bashir being genetically engineered, uh, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Um, I can't help but see it as an obvious ploy to try to make the show more interesting instead of sticking with the show's established character arcs. Anyway, with the statistical probabilities, this episode is very remnant of many other TV episodes trying to be like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and other classic movies about mental institutions as the characters in this episode are clearly meant to resemble patients from a mental institution with all the classic stereotypes, the manic one, the silly one, the sleazy one, and the silent one. So, so far there's very little in this episode I find interesting or original, and it's based off of a concept of uh, Bashir's genetic engineering that I think is a bit ridiculous to begin with. Uh, but then we introduce the Dominion element to the story and things start to get a tad bit more interesting. Uh, this is the first time we've seen the Dominion Cardassian side uh, since the Dominion takeover of the station story arc uh, that was resolved three episodes previous to this one. So this is where we first learn that Damar has been promoted to the leader of Cardassia after Dukat went bonkers. Uh, the concept that uh, Dukat's underling would be promoted uh, to the leader of the Cardassian people does seem a bit far-fetched. Um, on the face of it, however, that you know, this episode tries and succeeds uh, to make the, this concept a bit more plausible by making it clear that Damar is just a puppet that Wayun is using to control the Cardassians and they are strictly under Dominion rule. Uh, plus since Damar was uh, Dukat's right hand man it's not too far fetched that he would replace him. However of course the truth is they wanted to keep a series regular and in an important position rather than introducing another character um, you know and that makes sense. Anyway, I think um, this episode overcompensated uh, for this a little bit because Wayun was a bit too on the nose uh, that Damar was just a puppet. I'm not some agent of the Obsidian Order. I'm the leader of the Cardassian Empire. Don't let it go to your head. You serve only at the Dominion's pleasure. I thought this was handled far better in the seventh season where Damar was given the illusion of power, but when push came to shove, he discovered he had no real power. So anyway, um, the initial concept of uh, genetic engineering um, patients being able to guess that Damar killed Ziala in order to take Dukat's place uh, just from watching the speech I find a bit far-fetched and I didn't really buy. Uh, however, the episode introduces a very thought-provoking concept when we get to the part about genetically engineered group discovers that there's no way the Federation will win the war and therefore they strongly push the, for the Federation to surrender. And what's more interesting is the moral dilemma that causes in Bashir, who is who was swept up in the arguments and becomes convinces that there's no way for the Federation to win, and naturally he becomes depressed when um, Cisco refuses to even consider the possibility of surrender. And so, uh, when Bashir comes along to stop Jack and Lauren from their plan to um, leak vital Starfleet secrets to the Dominion. And it's it was sabotaged because Selena, you know, the quiet, silent one who doesn't talk, frees Bashir, allowing him to stop them. Um, 
So Bashir's argument is uh, since they couldn't foresee that Selena would foil their plans, then they also may be there may be something they didn't consider in their proof about the war, and the one person <laughs> could change the course of history. Which I'd say, you know, if they couldn't even consider Selena might set Bashir free to stop them, they are much more short-sighted than they seem because. Any idiot uh, would be able to consider that a possibility. And to me, um, through th their erratic behavior is more than self-evident that they are not as smart as they think they are and that their theories are probably filled with holes. And this seems to be supported in the future seasons, the, you know, the way that the war was actually resolved, because in this episode, the genetically engineered group predicted not only that the Romulans would join the war, but that they also considered the possibility that there would be a rebellion or, on the Cardassian homeworld, and that the Cardassians would defect uh, from the Dominion. Um, and they said that the Federation would still lose the war. Um, however, in the end of the series, the Federation did win the war, and nothing else other than these things that they had already taken into consideration um, actually happened. Um, there was the thing about the, the founders um, getting some deadly disease that would kill them all. However, ultimately, I wouldn't say that actually helped the Federation win the war. It didn't really affect the war effort one way or the other. And the Romulans and the Cardassian rebellions uh, were presented as the two main components that allowed the Federation to win the war. Therefore, these gen genetically engineered people were just flat out wrong. So I'm right. Um, they're just not as smart as they think they are. Um, but it is interesting uh, that this episode basically gave away what would happen in future seasons about the Romulans joining the war in the Cardassian Rebellion. However, uh, what was still an interesting metaphor that can apply to many modern-day situations uh, where the situation looks so bleak people just want to give up and surrender, such as political, social, and environmental issues, uh, problems like wealth inequality, world hunger, and climate change, and, you know, that looks so gloomy and impossible to combat many people's attitudes is, well, there's nothing we can do about it, so why bother trying? Whereas this episode points out the folly of that way of thinking and that our attitude should be more like Cisco's attitude that even if it is hopeless, you still have to fight like hell against failure because if you give up, then you're guaranteed to lose. So my rating for this episode out of 10 is a 6. Good. Uh, the phrase I think best describes this episode is, eh, it's alright. As I said, the message about never give up, uh, regardless of how hopeless the situation looks, is a good one, but ultimately it's not very interesting nor that original. Uh, the genetically engineered group can be funny at times. I had a big giggle when they were sneaking off to give the Dominion Secrets um, information and Patrick just randomly goes up to a guy and says, I'm Patrick. Patrick! But, oh... Overall, I found um, them a bit cliched, and I've seen these characters a billion times before. Plus, as I said, I'm really not on board with the whole Bashir being genetically engineered thing. So I kind of, it's a kind of a turn off um, of the whole concept of this episode. So that's it for my review of statistical probabilities if there's an episode you'd like me to review just leave a comment below and make sure you check out my channel uh, and subscribe to keep up with the future star trek reviews and thanks a lot for watching